Welcome back to the EU LCS. I'm Daniel Dracos, joined by Andrew Vettius Day and Dan Foxtrot Wyatt after an amazing finish between Schalke and H2K. Now, gentlemen, we have an exciting matchup ahead of us, but I feel like we have to go back to that game-defining moment. We have to relive it one more time. You've already relived it once. <laughs> Me and Vettius need to be there as well, Foxtrot. Oh, yeah. It was such a good play. I tweeted saying that it was like the greatest play in League of Legends history. I'm sure you can make arguments against it, but when I saw this play in the moment, it was everything that Schalke needed to secure the Elder Drake and finally find the game win. Beautiful panoramic, four members get knocked out, and I could just see the eyes in Shook as he kind of saw the Drake slowly fly further and further away, out of range of the smite ability, and then Schalke with the great team fight afterwards. And those are the picturesque moments that like careers are defined by right there. It is Schalke versus H2K, but just such a beautiful moment, and I think no surprise to see Vizicachi coming through with the player of the game vote. Doesn't feel like it was from any part of the game other than that one moment. <laughs> he had a solid game, don't get me wrong, but those are the moments that, I mean, if you're not winning fan favorite on the back of that, you're not winning fan favorite. Especially if it happens right at the end of the game where it's the last thing people remember. But like you say, I just saw the game outside of that. And let's not forget the stakes of what that play meant. Schalke looked like they probably would maybe even lose that game up until they literally just won it. So that was honestly just ridiculous. One instance kind of defining it all. Now, tonight is also the start of Nightmare Week for Rocket. They face a guy off against the second place G2 tomorrow, but tonight they have to go up against the undefeated Misfits Gaming. Tough schedule for sure, but the good news is, is that they have been Misfits Kryptonite, or at least they were in spring. They took both games off them. The almost perfect game, if you gentlemen remember. Mm -hmm. However, still feels like a little bit of a difficult matchup for Rocket, even if they have a little bit of history here. Yeah, it certainly feels like, based on the way in which Misfits is playing right now, uh, Rock out of the huge underdogs in this matchup. You have carries across the board on the side of Misfits. Uh, they're looking to finally secure themselves that 9-0 and zero streak, going towards that undefeated streak that so far only Fnatic has been able to secure. And when you think about the quality of players that will be going up against each other, it's kind of hard to count Misfits out. Now, Vettis, I know you've taken a long look at Rockat across the season. They've always been a team that you've had your eye on. So talk to me about what's going right for Rockat, what's going wrong, what stands out the most to you right now? Well, uh, in particular, I kind of want to look at their drafts because when we look back to last week and we look at how they played against the Unicorns of Love, we saw something from Memento which was very much about early game skirmishing. You have Camille and Zoe, really good two versus two, have a lot of power in the early game, and they're just really good at finding fights because of Camille's hook shot and the setup that Zoe has as well. They found a pretty effective win, they found a lot of early game leads, everything looks great for Rocket. You contrast that to their day two performance against Fnatic, and they just went for a very different draft, which doesn't really play towards their strengths. Namely, Memento playing things like Sejuani. Much more on the tank side, much more focused towards team fighting, and not so much towards early game skirmishing. And I feel like that when they aren't able to find these early leads, and Memento isn't able to set up these early skirmishes, Memento do not have, uh, Memento and the Rocket squad don't have the same level of success. And I I love that you're talking about Memento, because this is a guy we've always got our eyes on. Foxtrot, resident jungle expert. Let's talk a little bit about the matchup here. Memento versus Max Lore, two titans in the jungle for sure. Let's look a little bit deeper about how these guys actually play out the game. What are your thoughts on how this matchup? Yeah, I mean, both these players are standout junglers, but with completely different settings. And that's what I think is so interesting about the matchup specifically. Max Lore was Deficio's MVP vote, honestly, in the mid split. So there's so much you can say about him, but he's also been surrounded by the rest of the Misfits crew, which is an 8-0 team. Memento, on the other hand, is having a hugely standout split as well, but his team isn't so good. So what does that mean necessarily? Is that Max Law being a little bit carried by his team? But there's no, there's no argument for it on Memento. I'm not going to make any comment on that, obviously. But what I like as well, specifically, you can see the stats here. We're just two ridiculously good junglers. The stats talking for themselves. But stylistically, you talked about the draft as well and, and the champion picks that come out of both these two players are really quite similar with the way that they play. The Camille specifically that we were talking about that you mentioned before with the early skirmishing or early skirmishing as you would say, my Welsh friend. Camille is one of those picks that can do that, but also the Kindred. We've seen that twice already today. That's probably going to be a contested pick. Talia from Max Law as well. They're similar stylistic uh, players who pick similar stylistic champions. What happens when both of these players who want to play similar stuff and similar styles, specifically that early skirmishing, 
come up against each other. And I think that's what everybody is waiting to see. But I do want to talk about something you brought up earlier. You're talking about Max Lohr being on this star studded lineup. He's one of the stars we look at. Han Sama, another guy. Senkux, Mickey X, another two players that we're always talking about. But there's one name missing there. The man in the top lane, Vettius, you've looked a lot at this guy. You've seen what he does for the team. Why don't you take us through us? Talk to us about Alfari. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take this opportunity to talk about my Welsh brother in Alfari. Now, uh, the great thing about Alfari is he is a little bit of an unsung hero. The guy is very consistent, very reliable, and most importantly, he gets very few resources from the rest of his team. So I want to talk you through some of the great things that he does without getting those level of resources. So we kind of look at his laning stats initially. You can see that he's already falling behind. He's one of the worst CS performances of all top laners. He also has one of the lowest amounts of jungle proximity. Max Lord doesn't really like to go top lane. He much prefers to go bot. And you kind of look at the gold difference, it's kind of even, kind of close, but a lot of that is because of the, all the early towers that the rest of his team is taking. So early laning phase, he doesn't really stand out. Where does he stand out? A lot more in the team fighting. You contrast this to some of his team fight stats, and this guy has the highest KDA in the entire league. He's only died four times throughout the entire split. The amount of damage that he takes per death is 44,500. To put that into context, that's 21 and a half Teemos. You would have to kill Teemo 21 and a half times before you're able to kill this man once. And to illustrate how few resources he gets, when you look at the amount of farm that he is given between the 15 and 30 minute mark, he only gets 22%, which is ninth of all top laners. Because his jungle is taking it all. Maxwell takes all the farm away from him because he believes he's the carry. And regardless, he is still able to put up numbers like this. Outside of that, you only just have to look at his gameplay to see at all the other impacts that this man is able to have. In particular, in the side lanes. Something you'll notice Misfits do a lot of is pushing out these sideways to create constant pressure on the map. Both Alfari and Senkux regularly move outside of mid, but the problem is it does leave opportunities in the mid lane for the enemy team to set up a play. In this example, G2 find a successful kill onto Hansama. And in this situation, you're thinking, oh great, G2 can go for Baron, but they can't because on both side lanes, they don't have pressure. It is Misfits that have pushed out these waves and it's Misfits that control the majority of the map. G2 try to go towards Baron. They're trying to set this up, but the reality is Misfits have already regrouped. They have control over both the side lanes. They even gain control over the mid lane, and now they're the ones making their way over towards the Baron. Alfari did use his TP very early on in this play, so they realize, okay, in this situation, we have to force the Baron to get G2 to use their teleports. That's what they do, and what initially looked like a very promising play for G2 ends up swinging back in the favor of Misfits, because now G2 lost both their teleports, don't have control anywhere on the map, and Misfits are the one in control. And all of that was set up from the fact that Misfits had control of their side lane and something that Alfari consistently does. You then only have to look at his teamfight impact. We already talked about his teleports. Something that he often does in teleports is TP almost instantly. Here's a great example of that utilizing the good deep vision that Misfits often set up. And his target focus is always onto champions like the mages, where he can fully utilize the strength of his champion. Combine the fact that he has great side lane pressure, he effectively uses his teleports, he gets very few resources from the rest of his team, and he's still able to put up fantastic numbers and even secure a triple kill, you can kind of understand why Alfari is the unsung hero that enables the other four carries to shine so brightly on Misfits. Now the Misfits and Alfari have looked unstoppable, but in spring they lost uh, both of their games against Rockout. Let's see if they can get their revenge today as we send it over to our casters. Thank you very much, Vettius, and greetings to all you esports fans. I'm Devin Pyrotechnics Young, bringing you all the action alongside Martin Deficio Linga. Now, Martin, Vettius just gave us a massive amount of information about that man in the top lane, but I've got one more point that he didn't point out. He's okay. played five games of Mundo, and that it's champion true. is busted. Uh, Mundo is pretty broken, uh, that is very true. He's actually only played tanks, just to add one more point to that one as well. Uh, Mundo, of course, kills. being one of them. Uh, yeah, and he's actually still picking up a lot of kills with it. I love this puppy last week. I think it was one of the best puppies we've seen in Europe in team fights. Up until the last game. Up until Visichachi Visi gets that great ult, of course, that trumps everything, but pick a man face. There we go. As Vettius mentioned, Rocket 2-0 and zero over Misfits Gaming in the spring split. But this is the summer. And right now, Misfits are one game away from having beaten everyone else in the standings. Can Rocket put a stop to that as we get into pick and ban? Galio to Lee off the board, followed by the Aatrox. Yeah, Rocket always being one of the hardest teams to predict because everything is built around winning some early fights around Memento and Blank in the mid lane. 
If that happens, Rockets suddenly look great and they can actually win games. And if they suddenly fall behind, they lose in 25 minutes. So hard to say. And also Wild actually have four and four in the standings here. Heimer Dinger, no surprise, has become one of the most contested picks in Europe. Did not imagine saying that a couple of months ago, but that is the case. The meta, it does change. Now the Nocturne is also removed. We see the Zoe off the board. Now this means Rocket on their first pick are going to opt for a very fast Swain lock-in. Very standard so far. Still the triple flex option, which is one of the great things. Obviously on blue side, your early picks, you typically don't want something where the enemy team can just instantly counter pick you. And this is what we're going to see more of, Pyra. The Gragas. He's back in the and, meta, baby. And the Yasuo. I mean, the Yasuo nice we've seen a few times. Uh, obviously, uh, expecting it to go to Senkux in the mid lane. Already played it a few times. And Hansama is the AD carry man. So he's obviously not going to take the Yasuo. But the Gragas pick, it has become one of those champions where, again, you can flex it into multiple lanes. Mickey is a famous one trick Gragas in solo queue if you need it down in support. And also, it sets up very well around the Yasuo ulti. So, a good combination already for Misfits. Looks like on the Rockat side, they will get a tank to match up towards the top side. They take the Mundo for profit. Of course, nice little shout out to the coach, Freddy122 of Rocket, famous oh, Mundo baby. player back in the day. And you know what I like? Memento is not on Sejuani. When I saw that draft last week, I just felt like, man, this is like... Freddy had like page for a different team or something, and he was drafting for them instead of his own team because they could never win playing a late game comp. They need Memento to get early kills. That's just the win condition for this team. It's actually sad that that is the only one so far, but they need this Kindred to do well. Yeah, well, they definitely need someone else to be able to step up. That's a question we've been asking a lot. Like, where oh, yeah. is Rocket's damage going to come from apart Memento? Uh, Misfits, they lock in the Alfari now as we enter ban phase two. Or lock in Alfari, excuse me, lock in the Alistar. They lock in Alfari He's, too. It's, every He's time on I see stage, a tank, baby. I just figured, yeah, that's uh, who it is. More knockups for the Yasuo. This might be... Another game where Senkux can show his new and improved form here in the Summer Split. Definitely not the same play we saw in Spring Split. Uh, when we talked to him about this on the podcast, he actually mentioned that he's that kind of person who can... He will have one bad split and one great split, and that's just the same every single year for him. He just needs to be lucky that it's always the Summer Split he's doing well, so he can actually go to Worlds, and then Spring Split is, is, is the bad split. There you go. So let, let him warm up for a little while. It does seem like it's been key to Misfit's transformation from a very disappointing spring split. Definitely. Uh, he has kind of risen with the team's level overall. Yeah, and that's the fantastic story of Misfit's gaming. A team that did not make playoffs in spring split, did not make any changes to the main roster, stuck with all the players that now we have full trust in this lineup, improved the coaching staff a bit, and then now you're 8-0, clearly the best team in Europe, uh, and you're still also sticking with the AD carries down in the bottom lane. So I think there's a lot of really cool things around Misfit's and their success. I think a lot of European fans want to see them go back to Worlds and try and do what they did last year. Maybe this time actually win Game 5 against SKT. Who's probably not even going to be there. Hey, that's that's a whole other story. I mean, we're getting way out into the future, but zooming it back into this pick and ban phase, Misfits are also continuing to do what has found them success. This draft always seems to follow a formula. You get a self-sufficient top laner. That's going to be the Gragas. You get the mid and jungle synergy. Well, we don't necessarily know what the jungle's going to be yet. Yeah, but it could still be Gragas. The combo with the Yasuo, and it definitely means that Senkux can be set up for some good kills. Hansama now has locked in the Lucian as it's over to Rock at. It's one of those lanes in the bottom lane where while Lucian, of course, you have to constantly fear the potential Swain all in. You do have some power punching back if Swain does overextend. We've seen Lucians actually win lane uh, against some of the mages multiple times in EU LCS, but this case it, it looks like a Swain mid lane from Rocket, and will then be the Ezreal bot lane. So I kind of feel like Rocket is not gonna apply a lot of pressure on Hansama. I, I kind of wanted Swain bot lane with something where they could try and shut down an AD carry early. Ezreal is, should not be the answer. Looks like Hansama will be more than fine just playing a standard matchup in the yeah. bot lane. Not something we see all the time these days with the changes to the bottom lane, but. Oh, it's coming back for the It is coming back, and Hansam was the guy that's kept faith with it for a long time. Now the timer ticks Ooh. down, and it looks like we got a gangplank lock in. So there's a switch through there with that Gragas into the jungle. This Alfari not on a tank. Exactly. Five Mundo games, one Orn, one Poppy, one Shen. It's all gone now. He's on GP, unless they're going to randomly swap it to the jungle just to make fun of us. But no, GP top lane, traditional pick against Mundo. So that's not the surprise. It's just the fact that Misfits actually is putting him on a carry. The front line is now Max Law and Mickey. Obviously, the Gragas ulti, no matter where he is, is going to be very effective against Kindred, so it doesn't really matter for him specifically. And I think they want to try and give Alfari a good matchup top. You can go Klepto, you don't really fear the Mundo, he can't kill you, and you just farm. And you know what GP can do? He can ult to the bot lane. And that's where Misfits like to win games. 
And he can also TP down if need be. But he's talked about how quick on the draw Alfari is to try and make the play to help his team win the game. It was always going to be a mountain to climb for Rocket to beat Misfits Gaming Hand in their first loss of the summer split. But what is in the mind of Coach Freddy122? Can he do what no other team has done here in Europe? It's going to be hard. A lot of it is going to be on Memento in his early game. But we'll see if he can get some help from Prophet Blank and the rest of the team. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we, we keep asking the question, who will step up next to Memento? We don't need one game of someone being a carry. We need someone to consistently do it on the side of Rocket. I think the Swain-Kindred combination is probably where they're going to put their focus. Israel and Mundo on the side lanes, not exactly the guys you play around in the early game. We'll most likely be Memento and Blank together, trying to shut down Senkos. Here's the thing about that, though. The win condition for Misfits always seems to be getting the mid-jungle synergy rolling while the bot lane does its thing, pushes all in, and then the top lane stays self-sufficient. If that holds true, then Rocket are hitting at the strongest point of Misfits. Yeah, maybe that's how you break them. They're 8-0 right now. A lot of teams have been trying to hit all the weak spots. They're trying to camp Alfari up top lane. That didn't really work too well. They've tried to stop Hansama from getting ahead in the bot lane. Fairly unsuccessful in most of the games. Senkooks and Maxlaw, that combination in mid is important if you want to play around the side lanes. You, you must have a mid laner that can push and roam. And that's what they've found so far, this split here. Still very interesting with Senkooks, a man that... I feel like last split we tried to find like narratives around and we were always like, ah, just put him on a roaming mid laner, you know? Push out and roam, that's, that's kind of the style for him. It's not been the case this split. Like, he's on a Yasuo, it's hard to execute in pro play. And he's looking individually good on it. And it's... it's it's vintage Senkux in a way we haven't seen for a while. Back in his early days on Splice, the guy would lock in LeBlanc and then basically 100 to zero people or Splice would just lose the game. You put him on a champion like Yasuo that has that same kind of binary potential. You either do a lot or you do nothing. Yeah, a lot of people forget that Senkux and Perks joined the league at the same time in 2016. And while well, a lot of the initial hype was around Splice and Senkux specifically, it instantly shifted to Perks after a couple of weeks and it stayed on perks for two years, basically. This really has been the split for Misfits and him, specifically to try and say, okay, can we actually win the ULCS? Can Senkux beat mid laners like perks and caps and show that he belongs at the top? It's gonna be one of the stories we'll keep tracking during the coming weeks. And meanwhile, in this game here specifically, I just wanna see what happens with Memento and his jungle pathing. Something we need to call out to as the game gets underway as well is just the sheer amount of teleports on both sides of the team compositions. Four for Rocket, three for Misfits. There's going to be a lot of movement around the map this game, a lot of team fights. <laughs> it's also a spell book on Noskaren, so it does have the ability to change around a little bit. But yeah, TP coming in. Still kind of been a meta uh, a lot of times, especially because if you play against a guy in the bot lane with TP and you don't have it, like he gets much better recalls than you do and tends to actually get a lot of lane control. And it becomes less about all-in killing without running Ignites down there. And because you can't expect the enemy team to do the same, well, you don't have to then take heal or barry or anything defensive. So mm -hmm. it becomes just a match. Also, again, kind of highlights to me this probably just going to be a farm lane bot. Yeah, for the time being. I mean, the Ezreal and the Braum, something to kind of give that a sense of it as well. And now this is also for people who was only were only watching Norse Garen this last split. Uh, kind of an old favorite. He used to be kind of a Braum one trick. He would lock oh, in yeah, almost every single game, but he went aggressive with it. So you think maybe this is a farm game, but. I'm wondering if Norse Garen doesn't try to go for the 2v2 when EQ feels confident. I mean, if the opening is there, you go for it. Meanwhile, Memento, Santa for him. We'll end up losing this top rift scuttler over to Max Lore. It's a little unfortunate. Crowd, very happy very about Very early on. Dying. He didn't even kill it yet. No, nope. but they know it's going down. That crowd don't fight back. If he had just walked away and not killed it, you guys would have looked terrible. Uh, he does get the vision down early game. Memento a little bit preoccupied with the Gromp. And this is what you got to do if you're Maxlor, try and keep the Kindred marks away. Yeah, it also kind of sucks for him because top lane is the lane pushing right now. Like, ooh, you love to gank GP early game. It's not that tanky. But there's two wards, or one ward plus a Rift Scuttler spotting him. So it's simply not possible for Memento to, to get in there. That means how far he's safe. He just keeps pushing. Well, there we go. Well, Rocket definitely feeling a little confident, at least from the social media account, that they can take down Misfits Gaming, but honestly, the 8-0, and zero, it's, it's not idly earned. These guys have been so far so dominant, even against some of their peers, some of the better teams in the ULCS, that game against G2 Esports especially. Yeah, and again, that's 
That's the thing about Rocket. Like, whenever you feel like they don't have a chance, they randomly do something crazy and then they win the game. You're like, okay, I guess Rocket is great now. And then the next game, they just lose to a bottom team. And you're like, okay, I have no clue what's actually happening. And it doesn't matter who's on the lineup. They've done this for years. Yeah, it's The one thing that's been consistent about Rocket uh, is how unpredictable they actually are and the fact that they can take relatively unknown players and, and rise them up to greatness. We've talked about this at length with the likes of players like Jankos and Vander coming through from back in the old days when they were all Polish lineup. Mm -hmm. But Team Rocket has always been able to do that. And this is why they have that moniker of they're a team that can beat anyone and lose to anyone. And, and it, it's kind of right there, four and four. They just split yeah. the difference in the LCS. And they did make playoffs last split. Obviously, didn't get the result they were hoping for in the quarterfinal, but I think they surprised a lot of people by actually getting top six. Uh, people thought there was going to be a lot a lot of issues with Synergy with the five new players. One of the teams making the most changes, but obviously it was not the case uh, for them. Meanwhile, just a farm fest so far. Memento not been able to find any openings. As Memento looks to head up, it looks like that's about to change. He's waiting in the wings for the teleport to come in. So that's the gank you were looking for, but I don't think he's going to find it. Level four versus a level five Alfari. Yeah, I don't think he found any stacks yet either. Yeah. Well, while the game is a little bit slower, we have teleports coming back in. We asked the question in draft phase, who was going to be the other carry? And I think I've got a candidate for you, Deficio. HeQ, maybe not in this particular game on the Ezreal, maybe if it goes a little bit later, has been providing a lot of the team's damage outside Memento share. Yeah, HeQ's been one of the eight carries where he's rarely the reason they win, but he's almost never the reason they lose either. He's just a very, like, consistent, stable player. And Rocket... Try and use him just to sit and hold the 2v2 lane bot. Meanwhile, Mickey and Oscaron gets a quick trade. But that's kind of thing. That's where, again, with EQ, if he consistently could actually have some of the great games we've seen in the past, he would suddenly be the second carry on this team. It's going to come down to champion choices as well. You can see the way that he actually uh, breaks down the damage share, does the most on his team, and he's the second most for bot laners. It's been a very unstable split for bot laners, admittedly. But this guy, he takes the Ezreal when he wants to stay safe. That's only happened one other time. He's playing Vladimir bot. He's playing True. Ziggs bot. He, he picked the Zaya up as well. These are all champions that want to deal a lot of damage uh, early and often. Yeah, and he's done pretty well on the mages. He actually did adapt to the meta. Now, I want to see on this uh, Ezreal here, because if you are going to beat Misfits, you need multiple players probably performing above their current level. So HeQ is one of the guys we have to look at. Like right now, he's going straight even with Hansama in the bottom lane, so that's perfectly fine. He's just going to start stacking up on the Ezreal. And then we can get to judge him in team fights once we get there in a couple of, uh, I say a couple of minutes. Let's give, 10, 10, give, it, give it a little while, start the timers. But he's not the issue right now with the way the team is playing out this game because not there's the a issue, 500 the gold deficit. It's sitting mostly in this top and in this mid lane with the CS differential. And now Alfari's giving Prophet even harder of a time. There is a Max Lore waiting in the wings, but Prophet's smart enough to not to push too far forward. He's going to have to tower farm for the time being, and maybe Memento comes in. Oh, Senkuk's on the way as well. Might be three-man diving. Memento, no level six yet. Okay, there we go. He's going to throw it on Wolf's Frenzy. Max Lore comes in. Senkuk's spying the kill. It's going to get the knockup. That's first blood on the last breath, and it was the last breath for Memento. Rocket and retreat. Oh, double TP by top lane as well. We got five players up here from Misfits. They want the first turn. They want more. All of a sudden, it's a death ball, and in goes the Cannon Barrage, and the Mundo gets stunned up. Not enough healing to come through for him, and Blank comes a little too late to this party. Senkux picks up another kill, and it's a disaster for Team Rocket. Yeah, this whole thing just went terribly wrong for Rocket. Here, Memento was not level six. He stepped top lane, thinking it was just going to be a 2v2, and maybe he could pick up a kill on the way out. But Yasuo had already left the mid lane, should have been communicated by Rocket. And suddenly, the level five Kindred just becomes the target. Yeah, Look, this guy's flipped a switch. Here goes the play. Yeah, Senkux, he's left the lane like five seconds ago. This could, could have been called easily. Memento could have backed away, but did not happen. And that's where Misfits show aggression. And the coordination, there was almost zero delay between the barrel pop and Senkux executing with his last breath. And then the follow-up. There's really nothing to complain about here. So what we said in draft, you know, the combination, early picking Gragas and Yasuo. Okay, Yasuo can go to two different lanes, potentially even three with top lane. Gragas can go to multiple lanes as well. So you don't fully show your draft yet, but you have a combination that works together. Force the flash memento, throw the ult. No matter what, he's going to die when, y when the Yasuo is there. Great play for Misfits. Timing the whole thing with the big push up top lane, having double TP ready. And Rocket? This is the worst kind of situation for them. We already mentioned Memento cannot fall behind. Right he's now, behind. he's behind. His team is down 2,000 gold. And 
He didn't have the lamb's wrist, but I don't know if it would have saved his life for more than a couple of seconds. But Maybe he can get over the wall. The play. He Maybe. had the experience differential. This goes back to the early play. Max Lord denying him a little bit on some of that. And this is what Misfits are able to do. They generate great goal differences in the early game, consistently up against their opponents. Taking a look at how it all breaks down, it's usually Han Sama making up the mass, uh, massive amount of difference, but Max Lord's in there too. Yeah, and Sama not uh, ahead, uh, well, uh, ahead in this game. Sorry. Uh, Zengux, on the other hand, just managed to get the first kill. Yeah, it mixed things up just a little bit. So we'll see if that trend continues. It is a 2,000 gold advantage or so for Misfits Gaming. They've opened up this top lane, so Zengux has free reign to give Profit a really bad time. It's tough being the Mundo against the GP. It's also very tough as a jungler if you try to play around your losing lane when he's under pressure, because you can't win the fight, especially not when the enemy mid lane is there. So Rocket's draft has kind of put them in a spot where they didn't have a lane, as we mentioned, or the mid they could potentially look to. But they haven't been able to get anything done around Senkooks, and now the lane phase is over. First turret is gone, teams are splitting up, Yasuo is top lane, and the Memento blank hype train, it's not, uh, it's not really leaving the station. No, no refunds on those tickets either, it would appear. But well, what can Rocket realistically do at this point? M Misfits have, have grouped up so hard and, and pushed objectives so effectively. Where are you looking for the damage to start coming from from Rocket? Right now, they need items, first of all. They have almost no AP or AD on their carries. They're all sitting on just the first couple of items that's supposed to help them through the laning phase. They didn't want this to end at 10 minutes. They wanted a long... Fine, slow. Yeah, you wanted phase. a tear stacking Ezreal. You wanted, oh, you wanted Blank yeah. to get his Rod of Age. I mean, they definitely need time. I, I guess if I can rephrase my question to Fischio, where do they need to look to try and stall Misfits out? I mean, looking at the situation now, at least they should be able to hold mid. Problem is, they just gave over Rift Hill. That could have been one of the places where if you stop them, if you move in as five, you have TP you can threaten with from Profit. You stop Misfits from getting a 10 minute Rift Hill at least. That kind of failed which now means your next turret is probably not going to be able to uh, survive the potential charge and a group of misfits. So you're in a tough spot. You were actually hoping for a game where Mundo also got his Sunfire. You know, he doesn't have to be too afraid of the GP then. At this point here, he's scared of everything. Uh, yeah. Prophet can't really move anywhere, so th they can't actually push out any of the side lanes. Uh, and they are effectively hoping misfits slow down, but there's really no reason to do that. And uh, they make sure that they have a lot of sight lines, Misfits does, on Team Rocket as well. You see the wards inside the jungle. It's also not just one-on-one. -on -one. Senkuk's being joined by Maxlor here means that Prophet's in trouble. Yeah, and remember, Misfits do not have to put the Rift Held mid. They can put a bot lane against the Mundo. Like, and then you have a Yasuo plus a Rift Held. Like, there's no way he defends that turret. So they have so many options uh, right now. Rocket should know that on bottom side, the jungler just showed himself. Maxwell so will put him mid though with the siege initially. Alfar is coming down as well. Five men around. He Q, my man. It's time to wave clear. Let's see if he can do it. I don't know if he can clear away the Rift Herald though. So Han Sam and Senkux might be backing away, but that's a lot of damage dealt on the charging Rift Herald. Misfits will not secure the tower just barely. Rocket did respond well. Uh, I think Misfits could have waited for a full wave, but we're like, you know what? This turret is going to die in the next push if we actually commit to it. It's going to be so low, it's fine. Just get the Rift Held down, move on with your life, start actually getting deep vision with the wards from Max Lloyd that he now gets after getting rid of the, the Herald itself. So I, I like to play just for the speed and the pace of the game. No need to wait for a big wave. And there you go, that's mid lane turret gone. What's next, Pyre? Great question. Bottling turret. Pretty easy peasy. And now Prophet, he's still going to have a hard time trying to survive the push from Misfits if they group up, make this happen. Nowhere else to take anything on the map outside of perhaps the Cloud Drake? Yeah, not really the way to get back in the game, sadly. Also, currently only one stack for Memento. There is one at the Raptor camp that just got killed. Uh, sadly, means for him he's not going to be able to get a lot more in the early game. And this is this is the weakness of a Kindred. If you can, you can shut down the stacking early on, it takes a lot longer to get online, which means Memento's kind of shuffled off into the same territory that Blank and EQ are being down on their items. Now, hopefully for Rocket. Next time they go back, they can actually fully complete some of the first items. We got the one on EQ now, so he's the strongest member on the team. If there's anywhere for him to actually make a play, it should be around him specifically. Not that he's at a spike yet, but at least right now he actually can deal some damage. You can see on the side of Blank here, no Rod of Ages completed, should be on this back. But we'll take time for him to actually stack it up. So we're basically just looking at EQ and saying, okay, if you're going to get kills, he needs to be there. He needs to be the one executing, but he's up against... Honestly, he's still a pretty terrifying team, not just because their name is Misfits. 
You've got the Blade of the Rune King completed for Han Sama. The Phantom Dancer, of course, long since bought by Senkooks after the first couple of kills. And even the GP starting to stack up an item. The Sheen, the Executioner is calling. It gets better and better. We saw that one, Pyra. The Swain. Did not manage to get the blue buff for himself. Uh, no, no one saw that. We don't talk about that. Sorry, sorry. Memento got it. It was all planned. He wanted it. Mm -hmm. Max does bot lane. That's the turret we talked about being the only one standing. Prophet is trying his best to defend it, but he is all alone in the world right now. Oh, this is a little bit rough. And there goes the bop into the knockup. He goes golden on his stopwatch, but it's only going to buy a few seconds. Teleport does complete for blank, though, to help push away Max Lauren Senkooks. This is what I just love about Misfits. Like, this is all planned. They're like, yep, yeah, we got push on bottom side. Let's move down, force a TP, because the, the reaction has to be TP and probably stopwatch. Notice how they instantly back away. They don't like stay around thinking, oh, maybe we can do more. No, they just step away. They got everything they needed back to set up the next play. It's constant like pace of the game just kind of being sped up way faster than most of the European teams actually want to play. There's never a moment where Misfits are just sitting back saying, yeah, let's not do anything, let's just farm. Like it's always like apply pressure somewhere. Where's the next play? Okay, top side, Afari has to push. He also has GP ult. Well, there's now no stopwatch on the Mundo. So next time you go for Tower Dive, you can actually kill him. And this is what Misfits spent their off time between spring and summer working on. We, we've talked about how this team invested in additional coaching staff and decided not to change their players, but to focus on the fundamentals, to focus on the strategic element of playing a, a planned game. And you can see it on full display here, the fact that they've got themselves completely in the driver's seat of 15 minutes, 3,000 gold to lead, two towers to none, slowly squeezing the life out of Rocket. Let's see. Rocket will get a little bit of time to at least push out some waves. That's kind of the, the only win for them so far. Sadly for them, Memento is not ahead in this game. St. Cook's looking for more bottom sides. Oh, here we go. There's the last breath. Blank, how fast can he walk back? Demonic Ascension on. He's going to turn St. Cook's away. Nor scary. Memento actually coming through here. St. Cook's might need to watch himself. Good win wall. Same kind of setup. Jumps in. Instantly starts stepping away, knowing he can't actually commit to the kill. Rocket did try and react in time, but Misfits used the time just fully resetting. Hansama went back to base, Maxwell back to base, now Far did the same. Simply knowing, okay, Rocket is investing time going bot lane to try and kill our split pusher. They're not going to kill him, so there's nowhere else on the map to gain an advantage, therefore we can freely go back to base. And now look at Maxwell. Sneaking his way down. For a big guy, he definitely looks pretty stealthy. It could be trouble if Blank goes here without a whole lot of help. Yeah, Max Law and uh, Senkux just want to keep applying pressure around the winning lane. Blank, there's no stopwatch on his side. He's coming down the Kindred. They see him for now. Meanwhile, top lane, no one is defending. No Prophet needs to be the one holding that, but he's mid looking for a potential fight. Rocket, don't really have any hard engage to actually start this fight with them. It will be Braum flashing in. So now Prophet has to just go back knowing, okay, we can't actually get the fight we were hoping for. Yeah, Misfits can just freely push away. So that's a big wave come crashing into the top tier two. Prophet's going to have to go up and try and catch it. Misfits just continually dragging Rocket around. And they're keen to dive if they get a numbers advantage, but they don't actually need to make the big plays. Mickey X Hansama going on a ward clearing spree here. And it looks like they're setting up for a dive in the bottom side. Memento forced to back away. Blank as well. This will be the third tower falling to Fischio. Rocket have not managed to get anything in this game. And now the outer walls have been breached. And it's just credit to Misfits for never giving them a chance. They're not diving crazy, stupid things. They're not committing five members to something they shouldn't. They force a play to step away, knowing, okay, small win, stop, watch TP something, return next time, get the objective. And that's where you get consistency. And that's where you get a team where you can actually realistically predict 18-0. Because it's not crazy plays or just being individually better. It's actually being very smart. And it's so difficult to actually achieve that, that 18 and 0. We've only had it happen with the 2015 Fnatic and what a time, the format baby. changes. What a time it was. But it was a very special time, a very special team, and a very different uh, meta, and the talent was at a very different level. Misfits, if there is a way for them to channel that, they've already beaten almost everybody once. They do it here against Rocket. All they got to do is beat the same teams a second time. It's true. If you can do it once, you can definitely do it again. Uh, no matter what happens to the meta as well, they should actually be fine. That's one of the things we talked about in Reddit check, how if more and more AD carries are going to get buffed, which is the case right now, we see the items, crit items as well. That's a paradise for Han Sama. I I mean, mean, this guy this guy wants to pull out the Draven. The only downside for Misfits, if that happens, is the fact that Reckless probably returns to Fnatic, and then it gets a little bit harder. It's a weird time. It's a weird time it to is. be watching, isn't it? When, when, when that's is. the point you can think of. Uh, once again, Max Law and Senkooks, they pick the champions together first in the draft. They walk together all game long. All they're waiting for is Ma Maxlow to throw one big ulti. Senkooks will kill someone 
no eye edge yet. And we're also only 19 minutes in. It just feels like Misfits have been in control since five minutes. Yeah, this is the most controlled Yasuo play I think I've ever seen, actually, because you want to be diving in and making the kills if you can, but he's, he's surgically executing players. Rocket's not necessarily stepping up to the plate, but uh, this ain't no solo queue. I just feel like with Rocket, like not saying the draft is bad or anything, but the moment they lose that first fight and the turret, they just have so little comeback potential. Unless it's Misfits actually opting into a play that could give a big team fight. That's obviously Baron or, you know, a big Drake or something where Rocket had five members around. They can't start the fight. They don't have engage on, the, on, on their team. But they can at least walk in and contest the objective, and that's where they get the five on five. And that's the moment he queue needs to shine. Unless the fight happens before, it looks like Norse Karen steps too far forward. Max Lore presses the delete key. Yep. They see an opening, and Norse Karen is dead. That's going to be another Drake for Misfits. And that's what I just talk about here. Like, Rocket never decides when to fight. Like, they're not forcing anything this game. They walk forward, and if they're lucky, Misfits want to take a, a bad fight against them. Oh, as Misfits just killed him. And Prophet forced to flash away as he was going to get Barrel Bopped back into the Misfits team. And now it's going to be Tier 2. They don't even need to try and take any other objectives. HeQ fires the True Shot Barrage, melts through the minion wave. Taking a look at how this gold game has gone. Slow and steady wins the race and gets them into the base sooner or later. We're only 20 minutes into this, Deficio. It's, it's still growing very slowly. Sure, but we got to talk about potential perfect game happening here. 3-0 on turret, 3-0 on kills, all the objectives for Misfits. This is the moment when Oscarin is hoping, oh, maybe, maybe we have Prophet in here, we can take the fight, but Misfits have already moved their mid laner to this lane here. And it is one shot on Oscarin, who of course is not going to be very tanky at this point in the game. I'm just looking at all the outer turrets for Misfits. Top lane is on 95% HP, mid lane 98% HP, bot lane about 85%. So none of those turrets looking to go down in the near future. Unless Rocket can trade sides, which is one of the ways back, but that's hard when you've lost all your auto turrets. That seems to be the difficulty and, and why they've started sniffing around for maybe a quick pick. But Misfits know how to collapse, know how to step up. And these half commitments from Rocket are not going to get them anywhere. It seems like the magic that this team has to sometimes upset is not present in this game. Not yet, at least. It's always there sleeping, but like, where is it? I want, I want it to wake up to Fisher. We waited 21 and a half minutes. It's true. And I know right now it's a very Misfits one-sided cast because they're the ones literally about the perfect game at the enemy team, uh, and they have the full control. But another thing to highlight that's important is how whenever Misfits push down their lanes, notice how rarely they stay and just start hitting the turret. Notice how often they push down the wave to the turret walk into the enemy jungle, kill camps, walk into the mid lane, make a five-man play. It's always trying to group out with multiple members instead of chipping away on one turret. Because again, you speed up the game. You make it way harder for the enemy team to defend if they constantly have to fear that you're coming in from two different angles with five players instead of you seeing them already hit a turret in the side lane. So it's a lot about us constantly setting up a bigger play and not just a small, you know, chip on a turret for 10% of the damage. And spending all of that attention on the four members of Misfits means that there's always going to be one doing something else. Another push in the bot lane, Balafari Prophet wasn't there to catch the wave. He comes in now to pick it up. But Misfits are giving themselves options on top of this superior play style. And all Rocket have been trying to do is just get items. Please hold on to your turrets. You have only lost the three out of ones. It's not the end of the world yet. You should get at least one team fight. Well, and they've started to get some of those spikes that are really important. There's nine stacks on Blank's Rod of Ages. The Ezreal, of course, has that Trinity Force. And the Mundo has finally gotten himself the Sunfire Cape. But is it going to be enough? Well, for now, they are at least finding Max Law. So they know where he's going. Hint, hint. It's the Senkuk's lane. Oh, I would never have been able to tell. There you go. And they managed to step away from it. I had completed, though. That's a big spike for Senkuk specifically. He queued double tier on its way. So. Give him more time. He wants to get to the late game point of an Israel. He wants to get that last team fight around a Baron. If Rocket wins it, they're right back in the game. Then it doesn't matter you lost so many out of turrets and fell behind in gold. But that's kind of the problem with this kind of play, is if you then lose that fight, there is simply nothing left because you've already given up so much of the map. Now they absolutely have to execute when it comes down to it. But the question is, when do they feel confident enough to actually take those fights? Still mismatched on the items. Uh, even Alfari kind of starting to step up with there. The Storm Razor picked up for him to top off the Trinity Force uh -huh. and the Executioner's Calling. Yep, gives him the crits on the barrels. Oh, a nice little bonus for GP. Misfits don't have to five-man commit to Baron, which would be one of the ways for Rocket to get that fight we we're talking about. They can just two to three-man it. 
have the rest of the members sitting around mid lane pushing out, and then Rocket might not react in time. IH Yasuo will be able to get it down fairly quickly. Misfits seem to actually do it though because they see Rocket on the map. They are starting at five. A lot of is things. there a way for Rocket to get in here and fight? It is one of the ways back in the game. They didn't meant to be the hero, but they don't have profit there. They don't have enough people there in they time. Is it going now. to happen? They have to make this move, and it looks like Misfits are peeling off the Baron. Taking the fight there is going to be the Braum ultimate, but North Scaring gets knocked back into the cow, and Blank is distracting on the other side. Looks like Rocket might even be able to turn this one around. Baron's got a reset. Now Memento picks up a kill and scares Misfits off. This is exactly why I didn't want to see Misfits go five-man to the Baron. Simply not necessary. Start with a few members, get it low, then move in to finish it. Because right now, that was the way back for Rocket. They will even get a mid lane turret, they get the first kill, and they get more time to scale with the Ezreal. So, Misfits break away from the plan and they get swiftly punished for it. Rocket still behind in this game, but they pick themselves up a tower, they pick themselves up a kill. No perfect game this time around. Yeah, so the plan right here is start Baron, get them here, and then turn with Gragas or Alistar going in, and then the ulti from a Yasuo, but the only knockup here is on Noskaren, and now Maxlaw is in the back. He's actually not able to get a proper ult off, so nothing gets set up here for Senkux to do anything. GP ult was not used either. Just seemed like Misfits, the moment Rocket showed up, 100% sure what they wanted to do. Ended up just losing a member. Yeah, had the Baron pretty low too, before they peeled off it to take the fight. Kudos to Blank, though, positioning himself in the front, getting the Hourglass on oh, yeah. with his Demonic Ascension and just scaring away the rest of Misfits while Mickey X just goes down. So now we can get this situation where Rocket will get another fight. We said they might only get one. If they lose that, it could be over. Now they actually managed to get the first kill, get a, get a turret as well for themselves. I got to see the second tier on HeQ. He's currently sitting at 200 only, but... The fact that he's getting close to three items is really the win condition uh, for Rocket specifically. And Pyro, you said this early in the game. You said like, if there is a guy who's going to step up next to Memento, you are nominating Hikyu. And so far, it might be the case. Blank, of course, was the MVP of the last one to go with Noskaren. Mm -hmm. But Hikyu is still the one we're looking at. Well, the team definitely has playmakers aside from just carries. We, we talk about Norskaren. He started that fight. Now, let's see if Prophet can live through this one. Barrel Chain slows him down. He throws the briefcase. Not going to do enough damage. Teleport. And the Kanabraji flashes away. Is the healing factor going to be strong enough? He's trying to run, trying to go where he pleases. But Misfits say, you don't please anything at all. And now Mickey X goes in, looks for Hikyu. True Shot Barrage is going to fly. Alfari low. Another teleport. This fight is continuing. Alfari, he might be low enough, but the rest of Rocket have regrouped here. Memento going forward. Looking for Mickey X. Can they make this the one for one? They can. And the cow gets pulled in, and Rocket carved themselves off a slice of beef. Maxlaw is top lane right now. He can't join the fight. Rest of Misfits tried to help here after they saw, okay, we got the first kill, but now all of Rocket are moving down to the lane. Ends up being a one-for-one -one trade. Baron right now, is, it's fully warded. Maxlaw will just get all the wards. Obviously, need to be careful it doesn't get started by a couple of Misfits members. Rocket is on the way, though. But uh, EQ in that fight helped turn things around. The rest of the team, oh, they might do time. anyway. Let's see, Misfits waiting in the wings, trying to stop another Baron push. Looks like nothing's going to come of it. Oh, they hope to see someone on the map before they did it. Uh, actually, they're still around the Pyra. I think they're doing it, yeah, this Do is the them. thing. You got, you got to be quick here. Here we go. There's a reaction. You can see Blank and Memento already coming up, and they've proc the Scryer's Bloom. It's all five members of Misfits. Mickey X trying to guard the way. The rest of Rocket are too slow to respond, and Mickey gets the knockup, running distraction, and the Baron will fall. Alfari gets the final hit. True Shot Barrage comes in too late. Let's see how the fight's going to go down. North Scarin just gets melted off the face of Summoner Drift. Lambs respite by a tiny bit of time, but it's not going to be enough. There is a shutdown. Memento finds Senkooks. Hansama in the back, full calling to the rest of Rocket. They're sandwiched between the rest of the Misfits members. Maxlor finds Memento, but it's a bloodbath as EQ turns it around on Mickey X. And they decide to call a truce. In the end, Misfits got the Baron here. While we had to play bot lane, they were trading. Rocket were slow back on the map here, and Misfits, they saw an opening. They waited for the right members to be there. They started. Mickey's just zoning them here. He knows, okay, as long as we deny Memento from getting close, he can't steal it. That now means the engage is used from Mi Misfits early on onto Noskaren. Notice HQ here, he's actually in a good spot, but he jumps to the side where the wind wall is placed and thus pauses damage for at least a second. I think if he just stayed and tried to commit with the current flank, it's still an even trade between the teams, but Rocket of course needed more here if they want to actually get out of this winning the whole fight, but it is instead Misfits Baron. It is indeed, and you can see the frustration on the face of Norse Garen. But taking it off two members doesn't count for nothing, and Rocket, despite being behind, find a second even fight. It's true. Uh, Misfits have 
not been able to cleanly just snowball the game here. We started talking about perfect game. We kind of jinxed the whole thing because right after yeah, this I blame went down. And, and now it's a pause too, man. Yeah. This is all your fault. It's definitely ruins a perfect game. And it's long gone uh, for Misfits, <laughs> but if Rocket can stall this Baron out, then it's setting up for a very exciting late game. We've had two games so far today. It's actually gone to late game team fights. We so. had the longest game of the split actually. We did like the, the whole 25 minutes easy snowball. Not today, man. Not today. Longer games, more comebacks. This case here, Rocket has actually shown some good fights around Baron, but I'm mainly looking at Misfits. When you get that far ahead, you have so much control, you get Eye Edge on you, Yasuo, 20 minutes, you should cleanly get the first Baron. You should cleanly snowball the game. They didn't. Well, let's see how exactly it went down. Actually, we don't have it quite ready up just yet, and the league officials, of course, are on stage investigating the nature of the pause on the Rocket side. But yeah, it, it's, it seems like Misfits, they lost a little bit of a trick, and let's go ahead and see how the Baron play went down. Yeah, so once we get it again, this is where all of Rocket after the fight are not fully ready for this Baron to be started. You saw that recall from Nascara just when the replay got in your screen. Like, that's what Misfits were hoping for when they saw an opening to rush it. So three members are not even close. That means it's Baron, but the following fight is a lot closer than I expected. I thought Misfits would get this and just instantly kill the target, but Combo from Alistar is gone. Notice HeQ in the middle of your screen on the Ezreal. He's actually hitting it from the side. But he jumps over, I think because he sees Hansama go towards him. So it might have been the right choice. He was just there with Prophet. And Illusion jumping towards an Israel, of course, would hurt a lot for him. So I think he just wanted to join the team. Ends up getting an even trade. But the Baron call was great from Misfits. Harder than expected, but they got the Baron. Absolutely. And now, it'll be curious to see what they can do with the three members on the Baron buff for the time being. It looks like uh, the nature of the pause, it looks like it's been resolved. So we'll be going back in the game in just a moment. Couple of ticks away. Now Rocket still trying to hang on in this one, stalling the game out. Goldie's not been growing to Fischio, and we're back in the live. And it's one to highlight. So the Baron buff is on Hans Sammer. He's the one in the mid lane. Afar, he's the one in the top lane. So they have two lanes buffed up, and the one bot lane missing is the Yasuo, but there is a Gragas around him to actually give the buff to the minions. So there is ways for Misfits to spread it across the entire map, trying to get down the last of the outer turret here. Maxwell is around for a potential skirmish. So is Memento, but that's a decent bit of wave clear. Looks like Misfits are going to think better of it and back away. But you look at the top, you look at the mid, they're still pushing in. Three-pronged attack from Misfits Gaming. Should always be a lane where they can hit the turret. Right now it's mid because HQ stepped towards topside to try and stop Afari from pushing. That allowed Hansama now to get a bunch of hits on the turret. It will eventually go down, probably next wave for him. And HQ should actually jump here. Look go for the it, chase man. chase for Hansama. There's the dash away. They found Mickey X. Actually, let's see if they get the kill on here. They find him and take him down in just a few seconds. No, he's going to flash. Go over the wall, turn it around. And with the of Alfari, Mickey actually gets that one picked up. It looks like down to the bot. We're still fighting as the Lambs Respite's about to wear off. Zenkux finds one. Gets turned right back around on him, but it looks like Hansama coming to back up his friend Blink is going to go golden. But that is only going to prolong the inevitable. A couple of double taps, and that's a shutdown. Fighting everywhere, though, but Rocket in that mid lane. I think they could have won that 2v2, but they ended up spending so much time killing Mickey, and that then meant Hansama could actually walk away from the potential one-on-one -on -one against CQ and just join Max Law bot and get another win for the Misfits team. More fighting. HQ's back, though. That red buff. Keep going, man. Still trying for it. Double Baron buff, not going to be enough, but look at what's happening. Alfari in the mid, oh, yeah, completely that's unopposed. The GP. He just keeps hitting and running, this guy. Not Afar, gonna find Afar is that one guy not joining the fun. He's just like, yeah, I'm just playing my own game, you know? I'm just gonna keep push. Taking, yeah. taking all your turrets down. So, we get a fight mid lane, we get another 2v2 bottom side. Junglers and mid laners against each other. Everything goes in early, Senku sends up getting an early combo. I assume once we get the knockback here, yep, and then it ulti from Memento just in time to keep him alive. But now, what actually decides this fight is the fact that Han Sam had moved down to the bottom side after the trade mid, and he joins and trades suddenly and ends up winning the whole thing for Misfits. Meanwhile, HQ, full HP, red buff, wanted to carry so badly, but only Mickey was close enough for him to actually kill. And Mickey playing the hero, actually, as soon as he looked like he was just out of harm's way, he actually goes back over the wall with a headbutt pull of combo and helps secure the kill on the opposite side. But man, you could see it right there. That could have been a hero moment for HQ. 
Could have been. Win the 2v2 in the mid lane, go down bot lane, kill Max Law as well. Man, your entire team just stopped the Baron. Might get more fighting. I think we might have a few more hero moments. Han Solo nice gonna get caught up on the Glacial Fissure, and HeQ this time puts him down six feet under, and now it's going to be an Infernal Drake. He gets a kill, but man, all oh, credit to Nascarin right there. Pyra in the pick and ban phase. You said he used to be a Braum one trick in the Springs, but well, he just showed us why this Braum play here was fantastic. Gets the knock up onto Hansama. And that's a big, big kill for Rocket. Man, this game is so wide open. Oh, it is, and it looks like it's about to be even further. Rocket now taking down Tier 2 in the mid. They're not stopping anytime soon. They don't need no Baron buff to make this happen. And Misfit still scrambling. 20 seconds on Hansom to come back up. The wind wall going to take a few that's seconds. A that's a one. great barrel chain to knock down the wave. And now Rocket in full retreat. Remember that Storm Racer here on the GP. The first initial hit is a huge one. Big place from the far end. He's the unsung hero that Vettius talked about before the game started. I think Vettius sung quite a lot about him. He did. Honest. He showed all the great stats. Those are the tank stats. Afari this game has done extremely well in his lane. It was around topside that got the early leads. And while we had a lot of fighting around Max Law and HeQ, he's just been pushing. And now he's showing up. And he's neutralizing the Mundo, too. Normally when a team picks this Mundo, we've seen what Alfari especially has been able to do with this champion. Uh, just sit behind enemy lines and turn your W on and kill people very slowly. It's not happening because Prophet has been starved for gold. He does have his Warmogs now. He has, you know, he's working his way up to a couple more items with the Giant's Belt, but he hasn't been able to have the same effectiveness, and Alfari's really playing against him here, that moral reminder to cut down the healing factor as well. Yeah, and if you can just ignore the Mundo because you have multiple champions that can reach the back line, well, you don't care. I don't care. think they're ignoring him here. Uh, I think they want to kill him. For you. Oh, okay, he's out. Small one, but like, you got GP Barrels and GP Old. You have Yasuo Ulti. Like, you have multiple champs who will reach HeQ and and the backline of Rocket here, so they don't need to kill the Mundo first. It is not necessary for them to win the fight. They actually need to kill this level 16 Ezreal, and of course, the Swain, who's also just kind of been sitting and trying to catch farm in all the different waves. Uh, he does have Hourglass. He's going to be hard to kill for them. It's very much a shotgun comp for Misfits. Quickly, bam, that's what you're looking for. If they don't get the initial kill, it's all about Hansama. Yeah. Firstly, taking out Senkrix is going to be a big deal for this team, but Rocket needs to be able to watch their towers. Another one falls. Misfits, that's number six for them this game. And that's why I think GA from Senkrix, if that comes in as the fourth fight, and that might be the biggest one for Misfits. Because if he can actually jump in and not be scared of instantly getting bursted down, suddenly he can play a lot more aggressive in that back line. Meanwhile, this second tier is almost fully stacked from HeQ. He has managed to hold on. There it we just go. Hits. It is actually full stack now. Great prediction. Well done, Deficio. I still can't believe, like, 50 minutes ago, we were like, yeah, 3-0 for Misfit. This is Rocket. All this is the what turrets. these guys do. They're going to get everything. Like, there was no damage on the side of Rocket at all. But they managed to stall it around these different Baron fights and then actually the skirmishes right after. Speaking of Baron, it's popped back up on the Rift, Rocket. They are the ones who have the wards around the pit this time around. They have the control now. Senkooks and Maxlor sneaking around the backside. But... This is much more even than it was the last time around. It's true, and uh, 5k of the gold lead from Misfits is just on Alfari over Profit. It's not over someone like HeQ specifically for the fight. Rocket is starting it. Teleport coming in for Alfari. This is risky. They peel away from the Baron. Don't want to force the fight just yet. Teleport's going to get canceled at the last second. So successful call here. Start Baron, CTPs step away. They're now on long cooldowns. Mickey used his, I believe, of Fari. Actually fully charged it. Hold on, Max Lore, They're gonna try to get this one. Mickey's gonna get one knockback, but do they have enough damage to follow through? It looked like that caught everyone by surprise. The barrel's gonna come out. Oh, Senkux's gonna try to get the massive kill. The Lambs Respite keeping everyone alive for a few more seconds, but Senkux will take down Blake and his Misfits cleaning house. Only Hinku's gonna live, and that's not enough. So much hype around Rocket potentially getting back in the game, and then Misfits need one huge team fight. It was a slow start. We were waiting for Senkux and he managed to Q flash forward, sets up his own ulti, forces Memento to use his, and then Misfits have enough time to regroup and just kill everyone once the Kindrel is gone. What a huge team fight! And Senkooks, that was great. And they're still marching here. We've got 15 seconds at least before anyone comes back up. Are Misfits looking to end this game here? I think so. I mean, why not? Look at the death timers here. It's only Hikyu trying to defend. You got all five on Misfits. Not going to be enough of a hero this time around. Mickey X nearly eats it, but it's not going to be the case that he goes down, and it won't be the case that Misfits will take a loss here. Nine and zero at the halfway point of the split. GG, Misfits. Perfect start to the split for Misfits. Great first 20 minutes in this game. Struggling in the mid game around 20 to 30 minutes. But then once we go late game, 
They got one big team fight. We need to rewatch that team fight because there were some big plays on the side of Misfits. We absolutely do, and Misfits do what we expect of them. Wasn't the fastest, wasn't the cleanest in the mid game, as you pointed out, but, but it looked like they it, right? just had to close it out with one fight. But that's the thing we've seen a few times now. The last few games of Misfits, it's not just been 20 minute wins, which it was at the start of the split, where they just ran over teams instantly. There are some places where teams can get back against them, but then they've shown late game fights. And that was something they didn't always get to show us last split. They actually lost so many games once they fell behind in the mid game. Not happening in this one here. Big, big late game team fight. And of course, a big change for them is the fact that Senkooks is playing very well, but also Alfari on the GP, uh, feels like almost impossible to stop him from doing something in these games. And then they had, they had one small change to their winning formula. They put Alfari on a carry, and he does the most damage on his team with those Storm Razor barrel procs. Impressive stuff. Huh? Let's go ahead and check out that last fight of the game, though, brought to you by Acer Predator. Yeah, so let's see it again. With the initial engage coming in, uh, Mickey starts the whole thing with Max. Look at Senkux at the Baron, waiting and waiting. Hiku is not dealing any damage, he's shooting into a wind wall. And then the Q flash engage, all of Misfits then pile onto it. And now all of the members from Rocket are sadly for them too low. Some of the tanky members still healthy on that side, but Hiku, the guy we talked about, the guy who got four items, stacked two tiers, Waited 30 minutes for a big late game team fight. Ended up spending almost all of it shooting into a wind wall, and then he got knocked up, and he basically got CC down. And this is this is Senkux playing especially well alongside his team. He dives into the Lamb's respite, and he almost gets chunked out right before it procs. And you could see that health bar just going like oh, down to almost zero. No back up. Down back <laughs> up. That had to be the most frustrating thing for Rocket to just try and find that one kill that could have flipped the fight. Didn't happen. And that's. Uh... The sad story for a team that actually came back in a game they should not have done anything in. Uh, I, that's, I, that's the story of Rocket almost every I, time. They, I, yeah, I mean... You write them off, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's one of those losses that could have been one of those where ah, we got stumped, who cares, we lost in 25 minutes, but actually ended up being one of the really annoying ones where you, you were back in the game. You were feeling it, man. You were punishing misfits around the map. You, you had your carries getting fed. Like Everything was ready for Rocket to take the next fight. But sadly for them, Misfits still had a great late game comp and simply outplayed them in it. Yeah, Rocket will have to go back to the drawing board for their next one. But now, for this, we've narrowed it down to Alfari, Maxlor, and Senkux for your player of the game vote. So hit us up with your favorite at Lil Esports on Twitter. That was, it was a team effort for Misfits, as it always is. I'm Definitely very impressed true. with them. Definitely true. Yeah, now after the break, Misfits Gaming coach Moose will join us at the analyst desk as we look ahead towards our next game between Fnatic and the Unicorns of Love. You're not going to want to miss that one, so don't go anywhere. There we go, he's going to throw it on Wolf's Frenzy. Maxler comes in, Senkux spying the kill. It's going to get the knockup. That's first blood on the last breath, and it was the last breath for Memento. Gets the knockup, running distraction, and the Baron will fall. Alfari gets the final hit through shot. Barrage comes in too late. Let's see how the fight's going to go down. Norse Garen just gets melted off the face. Kill Max Law as well. Man, your entire team just stopped the Baron. Might get more fighting. I think we might have a few more hero moments. Han Solo nice going caught up on the Glacial Fissure. And HeQ this time. Prize. The barrel's going to come out. Oh, Senkux going to try to get the massive kill. The Lambs Respite keeping everyone alive for a few more seconds. But Senkux will take down Blake. And his Misfits cleaning house. Then he goes down. And it won't be the case that Misfits will take a loss here. 9-0 at the halfway point of the split. GG Misfits.